I, f I don't feel like you would, are gonna imagine your style because I see a lot of people like, oh, I'm gonna come up with my own style. I feel like if you're thinking about coming up with your own style, you're not gonna because you're gonna be looking everywhere else. You have to look inside. I see a lot of artists that say like, I don't wanna copy anyone. Don't copy them. But we're all influenced by other people and that's how you're gonna find your own style. Hey, I'm Lalo from Colombia and I've been tattooing for 27 years all around the world. You know, I come from the generation that was tattooing people's ideas and it was not really my style. Like, I would have my style, but not really. And with painting, I had my own style. Like, I was painting for real. I studied painting in New York for five years and sculpture, and I was painting 30 hours a week while I was tattooing 30 something, 40 hours a week. And my painting was very free in the school. Everybody was like, oh my God, where did you get this? And for me it was freedom. But since tattooing was from people's ideas and people would bring stuff, it was so difficult for me to break. And then I tried to do what I was doing on my painting on a scheme, but it didn't translate that well and I didn't know. And then I was doing realism when not that many people were doing realism and you know, realism is very catchy. And then I found myself doing these huge pieces, trying to find the smallest detail and everything. And it was kind of boring and I got bored of realism. It was difficult because I was still doing all kinds of tattoos, whatever people wanted to do. And then I remember at some point I was like, I'm gonna go Neotrad because I like drawing and I was good at it or I, I'm really good at realistic stuff and I paint abstract expressionism. I need to put these two together. It was difficult to convince people by telling them and it took me a while to like really finish the signs and show them and still because people have never seen stuff like that on skin they didn't trust it so it was difficult like I, I kept pushing and, and then finally I feel like the breaking point was I did a a portrait. I made it look like an old print. I put like some brush strokes and geometric blah blah blah. And once I posted that, then people were like, I want that. And then finally, because it took me like two, three years of figuring out what I wanted to do and then convincing people. And then that one and a couple of other ones were the ones who tipped the scale and, and then I started doing what I do now. Designing this Amy Winehouse tattoo was pretty exciting because he basically told me I want Amy Winehouse your way. That already is like, okay. And you know, she's, I like her, I like her music, I like her story, her energy, her character is such a crazy character. I like doing portraits, but I like to make them funky. So I found a good reference, he sent me some, but I found this one, I like how, like, the color was like orange, you know, I wasn't trying to get like skin tones there or nothing. I, want, I wanted to get something that it was like intense, like her life. He wanted to get this tattoo because he has in common with his sister who was diagnosed with bipolarism. For me, the most important thing is that the tattoo looks good. Then I look for elements of, I dig a little bit more in the story so they give me elements of to complement it. And he was like, and I like a line of one of her songs, which is a river of no return. We played with the letters and because of that we put the little paper boat on top and, and yeah, that was the process and like while tattooing a lot of these things just go like background and all that. I just play with anatomy and with whatever I feel like works is not all completely planned. How would I describe the type of tattoos I do? Awesome. No. I tell people I do magic realism because actually when I was doing Ink Master they asked you what type of tattoos you do and I was like my tattoos have a lot of realism but they're not realism. They have more spunk than realism and I take a lot of freedom on mixing realistic techniques with graphic stuff, painterly stuff. So I basically mix it with magic and I like the term magic realism because I come from Colombia and that's where magic realism is, is, is big, the literary movement, the art movement. I say magic realism because I allow myself to put anything that I think is going to make the piece better and there's no limits. You know, realism, you can measure it. That's why people like it. People are like, oh, if you can do good realism, if it looks like that, oh, you're good. I, I like to have that wow factor, but I like to put contrast of texture and things that are going to enhance that. I have two processes of creating a design, mainly two processes. One of them, I just design them. I do mostly collage now. I take a lot of images and put them together. And if I have to draw a little bit, I do. I used to draw my pieces a lot before, but the style I'm doing is very collage. 
is like being a painter, like selling paintings. You don't, you don't ask people what you're gonna do for your show. You do your show, people like it or not, and they buy it. But I also get people who have ideas a lot of these ideas are ideas that come back all the time, but I just want to do in my style. And people come to me because of my style. And during the consultation process, at some point, I send them that email who said like, okay, to move on, you gotta allow me to do it my way. And as part of the process, I also ask them like, send me three of my tattoos that you like yours to be kind of like, and then allow me to do this my way, otherwise, we don't we don't go forward like if you don't allow me that i won't tattoo you because i don't want to have the the your little voice here not letting me do what i think is best for your tattoo it's not an ego thing it's, it's, it's a technical thing that i think like allow me to do what i think is better for your tattoo and if you came for me is because you like what i do when i start tattooing mainly i would say generally i would go bottom to top to not erase the stencil but Depends also on the tattoo. For example, this Amy Winehouse, 50% of the tattoo was her wig and it's black. So if it was less, I would have gone like a printer from the bottom up, but it's so much black that I don't want that to contaminate my lighter colors. So I just went, did all the hair. And then since I was up there at the ditch, which was also dark, I frame and do background first and then leave the face for the last because then your contrast and all that are going to be more on point. So. Usually I try to go bottom up, but it also depends on, on the technicalities of the tattoo. The most important thing people should know about my style and my process, and by people I mean the people who want to get tattooed by me, because we're talking about tattoos and that's what they like, is that I'm a guy who is passionate about what he does and, and I tattoo for glory. I don't tattoo for money. Money is a side product of what I do and I've been lucky to, to make money out of what I do, but I tattoo for glory, you know, like, Every piece, I really take it super serious. I'll do anything that is gonna make your tattoo better. The most important thing in the room for me is not the client, is the tattoo. I don't cut corners, I don't skip things, and I'll give 110% on every tattoo. Uh, and I've been lucky enough that by doing that, more and more I'm able to do that. You know, like, I'd rather, I'd rather call off a day and not make money if I don't think the tattoo is gonna be perfect. Um, than just be like, okay, whatever, I'll just do it and I won't post the photo. Like, I am the kind of person who cannot live with that. I gave it my all or everything I had that day.